what is level two called? Well, it is late January in Pennsylvania, which means that it, this is the coldest time of the year. This is as cold as it ever gets here. And level two cold is when the snot in your nose freezes when you go outside after only a minute or two. And so, it's the time of year where I burn bowling pin wood. Listen, sounds like bowling pins, right? Maple's what they make bowling pins out of. And it burns hot, and it has to be really well cured to make that sound. The only thing I can burn that's hotter is coal, but I don't like it. It stinks and the ash is poisonous garbage that I don't want to dump into my garden. But I mean seriously, look at it out there. It just looks cold, and it is. Since this is the time of the season to cut into your reserve stock, like your finest top quality firewood, Occasionally you'll find a nice piece of cherry or something that you can pull a usable chunk of wood out of. This was supposed to be burned yesterday, but I just liked it too much and I figured I would turn it into something. Uh, there's tons of them in here. For the first time in my life, I have more wood than I can even craft with, which is a nice change. The stuff quite literally grows on the trees around here. Ah, uh, that's clever, isn't it? It's not bad. It looks as though it would fall out, but it doesn't. It, as long as it's the whole way back, it stays in pretty well. I was a little concerned at first, so let's still call it a prototype, but it's been doing pretty well. Why don't I just sink it into the log that's right here? I do, and the problem is that the log is nice to set my firewood bin on. So it just ends up in the way all the time. I prefer to have a place for everything and everything in its place. If you make one, it mounts to a stud here and here, and the PVC is screwed with four screws at a 45 degree angle. You know, northeast, southwest. You will have to fit the slot to your particular hatchet. And since no two hatchets are ever the same, uh, your hatchet may or may not work with that. This one here, it has a real slender head, and so it doesn't work so well with that. This is a Harbor Freight hatchet. I made the handle. It is hickory, I believe, from an older one. This had a some kind of pin in it from the factory, and so I drilled it out and put a piece of brass in. It's mostly cosmetic, but you may as well use the hole since it's there. And I don't use those metal wedge pins. They're a redundancy at best, and to be honest, it seems as though they just cause a an additional thing that it's a, an additional variable that expands and contracts differently than the wood, and so it, on the whole, I just find it to not be a good idea. You end up losing too much time removing them. They always end up wiggling loose, as these two will attest to. This one I use the most. Uh, I'm going to eventually have to refit it because it's showing signs of a little bit of wiggle there, but uh, I don't really like it. I think this one is my favorite. As time moves forward and I develop a very refined preference for the shape of the tool. I think my tendency is moving towards something like this. I like it shorter and fatter. I think the distance from the center of the handle to the edge of the bit, the shorter that is, the better it is for just general kindling splitting. Something like this is better if you're out in the bush limbing I think to take something outside, I would like something not quite so uh, long and narrow as this, probably something in between like this. But in here, I would prefer to have something like this. But this one I baby because it's an antique and it's uh, a, a bit of a thing of beauty and so I've really been holding off on doing anything to it. It 
it, it remains unchanged from when I bought it. And supposedly, according to the, my best estimate, it's a World War I hatchet, which really makes it historically interesting. Also, as time moves by, I'm really, really losing my love for this curved thing. I, I kind of favor something more like this. Straight, little bit of a taper here. A little bit of a firm fatness at the bottom here. And just, in general, more straight, less curvy. Mild curve, maybe, like in the case of this one, which I shaped myself. This isn't bad. I still have quite a few heads without handles laying around here, so in the spring I'll probably fit a few more, probably with maple and cherry handles. Because I still feel as though, with as much as I use a hatchet, I'm not quite satisfied. I have not found an optimum in any of these. Always improving, as tedious as it is, but what else are you going to do with your day? It takes about 15 minutes to warm it up in here with this wood burner. Uh, it's a really well insulated room. I did it myself, this building this wall, so uh, it holds the heat pretty well. I think it's something like 23 feet in each direction, and the ceiling is, geez, I don't know, probably a little taller than 8 feet. Maybe they used 9 foot studs, I'm not sure. Let me check. Yeah, it's a little over nine feet. Not 10 feet though. I can't remember my standard uh, stud sizes anymore. It's been a long time since I was framed. But the volume in here is not so huge for something like this. After a half of an hour, it's plenty warm in here. And after an hour, it's hot. And after four hours, it's intolerable. You'll have to open something or you just pipe it down by twisting that knob in all the way so that it doesn't get lots of air and then we'll have a real low simmer. If you use coal, which I would only do in the most extreme cases, it's just outrageously hot in here. It will radiate so much heat that it's hard to even put your hand near it. So I keep a bucket of it. There are differences between types of coal. This type here is good old fashioned, regular old coal. Where I used to live, this stuff was everywhere. It was quite literally poking out of the hillsides and it's kind of flaky, dirty, crumbly, and doesn't burn quite as well as this, which comes more from the north and eastern part of my state. This is called anthracite. So in contrast, this looks kind of shiny, almost metallic, maybe oily looking. And it burns much cleaner, much hotter, and just in general, it's quite a fuel. Uh, like I said, the ash is still dirty, and the smell is kind of, well, not in here the smell won't be bad, but outside it's just vicious. I will say this though, when you make a bed of coals, a coal fire, it really casts a lovely glow. It's, it's a, it, it has a kind of a beauty as it, it burns, so you can really lose yourself by just staring into the coals. But there's something just not quite right about it, as you, you can smell the, the fumes as it gasses off. It, it just, there's something about it that just doesn't sit right with me. It, it, you know how you sit around a wood fire and it just has that kind of nice smell, it's almost homey? Yeah, coal fires are not that way. It feels, it seems almost chemical. Well, that's all. I just figured I'd ramble to you for a few minutes and tell you about what it's like to be here trapped in Pennsylvania winter. Uh, I'm trying to warm this extension cord up enough to film a scene to show you how to connect two extension cords together for another little tip video. And I'm also working on that triangle puzzle for my main channel. So I should be filming today. Okay, back to work.
Oh, before you go, real quick, I figured I'd show you what's on my workbench here. When I moved into this house, it had tongue and groove beadboard like this in the bathroom, and they finished it with shellac. So what I did was I cut it into baseboard. <laughs> And so, in a way, I'm reusing the old material to give it new life. I know that tulip wood is not the best choice, but there's just a sort of beauty with tulip wood that I, I just really have a personal affection for it. It has like almost a green color that I, I really like. So I'm going to treat it with uh, an acrylic top coat so that it's crystal clear and doesn't yellow. You can see that shellac gives it a little bit of a yellow tinge and, and I, want, I want to keep it this way. I want to use crystal clear. Okay, back to work. See you later. Another feature of level two cold is the snow. It's the least fun of all snow. It's cold powder. Time to go back in by the fire. That is so much better.